Hey, good evening, everybody. Sorry we're a couple minutes late, but, uh, you know, good things come to those who wait. And all of you uh, have been very patient. Thank you for that. Uh, also, I wanted to thank everybody for the show last night. We raised over $1,400 for that Maui charity. And uh, it was thanks to uh, all the kind, uh, you know, contributions in the Super Chats, the art that we sold. So, uh, you know, kudos out to all of you. Um, I've already shipped the uh, the artwork that was sold to Maki Pupu, and uh, that's already in the mail. I'm sure uh, Jordan's probably turning his stuff around really fast as well. But again, can't thank everybody enough for helping us make that uh, very successful event, uh, you know, for uh, Jordan and his crew in uh, Hawaii. So thank you for that. So now we can get on with the show. We, uh, you know, it's uh, you've seen the the image on the on the slide. Uh, this is a guy who has a who definitely loves to get sketches. And we're gonna you're gonna learn a little bit about Michael. Uh, as part of that, we're gonna talk about that incredible cap uh, shield. Which no, that doesn't give me any ideas. I've already got the Stanley signature in the middle, just like Michael. And I'm gonna stop right there on mine. But uh, here, let me bring Michael into the chat. Hey there. Hey, how's it going, Michael? It's going well. Are you a fan of uh, the mouse? I see. I see you got him on your shirt. On your shirt. Yes. Shirt. I. I. I think. Mickey was sort of like my gateway drug into all sorts of animation and and uh, Disney itself and um, and and now and now they control the world. So <laughs> <laughs> well, they own Marvel. I mean, you know, it's nothing wrong with that. At the end of the day, I I, uh, I don't think so. Yeah, no, they, I think they've been doing a good job so far. So so far, they could do better. I, I mean, with some of the Marvel stuff they've been putting out of late, but uh, yeah. You know, they're allowed to kind of slack, you know, off here or there. I think, you know, but better things are always. Uh, out yeah, of I think I think their batting average is good overall. So, absolutely, we're gonna look at it like that. Then, uh, yes, uh, I'll, yeah. give, I'll give you that. So, uh, so Michael, it's good to have you on the show. Um, you know, you've been a you've been a calf member for a while, and I know that yes. uh, you know you have a penchant for you know more things like art, you know art and sketchbooks, uh, you know, and uh, less on the published side of things. And I think that's cool. We. We try to diversify who we, who uh, you know, who we bring in just to talk to. But I don't think we've talked to too many people who are more uh, on that side of the spectrum. You know, more people are half half. You know, maybe they're maybe or maybe they're big into more expensive commissions and published stuff. But uh, you know, you definitely have a different uh, different bent than a lot of collectors. So, give me a give me the scoop on how you got into original comic art collecting to begin with. Okay, so well, I went to my first conventions back. About 1976, when Marvel had the uh, convention in New York City, and I went to um, a couple of the Phil Suling cons, and it was just amazing because here was a you know all I knew was the spinner rack in my local newsstands, and here were comics from all times and places, and oh yeah, you know tables and tables with stacks of old artwork and i was too busy looking for new comic books that i had never seen before to that you know i was walking by all these piles and piles of original art which you know if i had a time machine i would tap my 12 year old self on the shoulder and say <laughs> you know go go spend the 100 bucks you brought with you to the convention and buy that whole stack over there cuz original art they were you know they kind of given it away back in the day mm -hmm. um but yeah, that's how I started going to shows. And I, and originally, like I said, it was to get, you know, stuff I couldn't get off my newsstand. Um, I started picking up, um, I remember I got Neil Adams' sketchbook, um, the one that had Atomic Mouse on the cover. Mm -hmm. And I got a Frank Brunner sketchbook. Um, and I met all these people who at the time, I, it, you know, I, I wasn't quite yet deep enough a fan of the medium, but I met people like Gardner Fox and Will Eisner and Kurt Schaffenberger at these shows. And um, I used to carry around the little three ring binder that you could snap pages into. And I, and I had a page that I got all these guys to sign in the back. Um, and then at some point I realized that there were artists there and they were drawing and I thought, Oh, that's cool. And at this time, 1980, 81, you know, you could walk up to somebody and ask them, could they do a sketch for you? And they would have a drawing pad and they would, you know, tear a piece off and, and you had a sketch to go home with. And pretty soon, um, there were enough shows in the New York area. There were probably four to six shows a year that within a couple of years, 
I had enough pieces that I thought, oh, I better buy an artist portfolio to put all these things or else how am I going to ever display all of them? Um, two or three pieces ended up, one of the earliest pieces I got was uh, George Perez when he was still living in Queens and uh, his local comic shop was, was a guy who handled all his mail. <laughs> and I saw him at a show and he said, I'll mail it to you. And I was like, okay. And, you know, six or eight months later, out of the blue, this picture shows up. Um, and then somewhere around then, 81-ish or so, um, I saw somebody with a sketchbook getting sketches in the sketchbook. And I thought, wow, that's so cool. And so I bought a sketchbook for myself and I started getting pages done. And um, yeah, at this point also, costs were minimal you or or you know gratis mm -hmm. um and usually weren't getting something very elaborate but it was the interaction with the artist and getting to to meet somebody whose comic book you read and then them drawing a picture from them um and um then at one point some artist said oh i'm in the middle of drawing something can you leave your book with me and come back in an hour it's like yeah sure um, and then I realized I'm walking around visiting all these artists and I don't have a sketchbook to get anything in. Mm -hmm. So I bought and a second sure At that point, they probably weren't selling, you know, like today you could probably walk over to the art supply uh, stand and pick up another. Yeah. Sketch. A lot of bigger yeah. shows, there'll be somebody selling today. Um, yeah. But back then uploaders, even sketchbooks. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I bought a second sketchbook and you know, one time, one book was out with one artist and another book was out with another artist. And it's like, I have no sketchbooks in my hand <laughs> and I want to get some sketches. Um, and so uh, at some point I got up to about five or six books mm -hmm. and there was one main book, which was an oversized one, which was listed. That's the big black book. That was the, this was the first book and the very first sketch out of it was like I was saying, it was a comic book that Fantagraphics put out called Threat that had three separate stories in it. Mm -hmm. And then that was the first sketch that I got. <laughs> Toxic. <laughs> it's 1986, like June 1986. All right. Yeah. And um, you know, slowly but surely the book got filled up. Um, and there's, there's sort of two distinct phases of my collecting. Um from when I started up until probably the mid nineties. And then for about a year and a half, two years, I lived out in California. We moved out there. We were there February of 2000 till um, October of 2001. And so I got to go to San Diego comic con those two summers, 2000 and 2001. Mm -hmm. And the first time I went, I was able to, this is before all the movies made it into a huge mega event. So you could still buy a four day pass or three day pass, whatever it was. And you got the preview night and the preview night was really still the dealers setting up. And I went that preview night. I was commuting. I lived about an hour away from San Diego and I had such a great time at the preview night that, um, a lot of, the, like I said, a lot of the dealers just setting up their tables. I met um, Michael Zuli, who had just worked with Alan Moore doing From Hell. Mm -hmm. And he drew um, Dr. Seward, I think was the character's name in the book. So he drew a sketch for me. And Dave Stevens was there, and I had a nice long conversation with him. And he drew me, he, he's, I asked if he could draw something for me. He said, well, I don't have anything to draw with. I just have a ballpoint pen. I said, if you don't mind using that. So I, I have a Dave Steven Rocketeer, um, awesome. which is very cool. Yeah. Um, but what clicked for me as I was driving home, I said, this is so much fun. And I knew three of the four next days I was going to be bringing my daughters who at the time were um, six months and two and a half years old. So on the way home, I stopped off at, at uh, Barnes and Noble, and I bought a pair of little six by eight sketchbooks, one for each of them. And the next day, when I went back for the first full day of the show, 
I just lived in Artist Alley and I asked everybody if they could do a sketch for my daughters. I was starting sketchbooks for them. And a lot of them, even then, this is in 2000, were like, yeah, for your daughters? Okay, sure, I'll draw something. <laughs> um, and then the next day, because I basically, for the whole four days, I lived in Artist Alley. Um, I was there with the double stroller with my daughters. And a couple of guys were like, oh, I didn't finish that yesterday. Can I have the book back so I can finish it off? And I got, I, I spent the whole show just getting sketches for them. And I got about 20 sketches for each of them. Um, and, you know, in an 80 page book, it was quite, quite a way to start off the book. Um, and yeah, so it became more, I guess, sort of family. Um, and then in, um, in fall 2001, moved back to New York and, um, you know, boring personal stuff, I ended up getting divorced and I got custody of my kids and they lived with me and I still wanted to go to comic book conventions, but I wanted to make it fun for them. I didn't want it to be that I was just dragging them around to the show while I was seeing all the artists. So what I would do, they both like to draw, but what I would do is I would hand them, I gave them little sketch cards, the little two by three cards. And they would go running around from table to table, getting artists to draw stuff for them. And, you know, in every show, they would get eight or 10, you know, sketches that way. And when we went to shows like in places like Baltimore, there were things to do in the Inner Harbor. There was an aquarium there. So it was a family trip. It wasn't just about hitting the comic show. Um, Baltimore has always been very good because they've had a, a kid's island. So they've always had a lot of stuff that's geared just towards, you know, new comic book readers so that's always been good um we went to when wizard was still doing shows we went to one of the wizard shows in philly and we saw we, we took a double decker bus ride we saw the liberty bell and uh, betsy ross's house and independence hall as well as going to the comic book show but it wasn't all about the comics but it was a chance to 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 introduce my kids to all this stuff mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I started making had, friends with for me too. I used to go to Heroes all the time with uh, with my kids because it was Father's Day weekend. Yes, so we would always make a trip to Myrtle Beach out of it. We'd hit Heroes for a day or a day and a half, and uh, when yeah. they were between the ages of like two and ten, uh, I would take them around, and you know, they they still like comics to this day. I, and I'd get some art for them, maybe not as aggressively as as you got for your kids, but. But yeah, I mean that's one of the things yeah. I talk about that a lot. I mean, with our hobby, you can you can share it with your family. And yeah, they, they can get into some aspects of it, even on the art collecting side of things, which is. Really and there were enough shows that were within a close driving range between um, Baltimore and whatever shows were in New York, um, Garden State, Asbury Park, which morphed into East Coast Comic Con, mm -hmm. um, some Philly shows. So we'd go to two or three shows, maybe four a year. Um, and I got to, because a lot of the shows would have some artists coming up again and again and again, and some of them were local from New York, some of them from out of state, and just got to, through repetition of seeing them, got to be friends with a whole bunch of them. And so it became more about hanging out with my friends at a convention as opposed to, oh, I got I to gotta get the latest, hottest artists, you know, remark on my book. Mm -hmm. um, so... Uh, about for about 10 years, my kids came with me to shows. And then when they got to that tween stage, teenager stage, they were like, okay, we've gone to enough comic book conventions, dad. Thanks. <laughs> I get that. <laughs> uh, and that's my question for Marcus. Yeah, I just answer for him. I, I actually didn't use sketchbooks, Marcus, with uh, even for my stuff back at that time period, as much as I, I bought a couple, but I started thinking about, you know, the idea of if it goes in a sketchbook, you're never, it's going to be harder to share. It's going to be harder to show on the wall. It's going to be harder to maybe sell in the future. So, so I actually carried around, uh, pads, pads of Bristol. I would bring it, bring like six pads of Bristol with me so I could leave them with artists versus leaving a sketchbook. Yeah. So even with my kids, there's a calf gallery, uh, in, you know, there's a room for my daughters and my son and even my wife, and you can see the artwork in there. But in all those cases, we, we were always just handing off, off pads of, uh, Bristol. Just, it just, for me, that was, smarter and you know anything my kids got we've never i've never sold but i just felt like taking yeah. them out and then putting them in a and i toy was was better than putting them in and i like sketchbooks i've i, I started one but i i just <laughs> gave it up early on i just felt like 
ah, you know, the paper's not as uh, heavy and, you know, I don't know all the, what was going, you know, that, but for me, I wanted it on Bristol, but, uh, but I assume, do, do they yeah. still have their sketchbooks though? Especially yeah. those first ones. Yeah. 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 And they're failed at this point. Cause they, in that, in that 10 year span, they went to enough shows. They were the big Apple shows and, and wizard shows. And they both went to New York comic con a bunch of times. Mm -hmm. um, again, a lot of what, what, keeps me going in the hobbies the the friendships and the stories at one of the new york comic cons my younger daughter who was six or eight at the time decided she had enough of walking around and so she crawled under a table and decided to take a nap there and um it was gene and adrian colin oh. <laughs> who we had met a bunch of times and they're like, Oh, we'll watch your daughter for you. You can go walk around. <laughs> we'll call you if she wakes up. <laughs> uh -oh, that's so, funny. so yeah, so a bunch of stuff like that has, has, has grown over the years. Um, now you mentioned friends. So, and you know, your first phase of collecting was before you moved back to New York. Did you have friends in the, in the hobby from like that 80, 1986 when you started that big sketchbook until I you didn't, moved? Or, Not or really. It was, it was mostly people that, um, you know, who I, who I grew up with, who mm -hmm. read comics also, but none of them really went to conventions with me. Um, and then by the time high school and college rolled around, everybody kind of went their separate ways. So it was always meeting new people at shows, um, Did and making like acquaintances that way. Right, like regular people in lines for certain artists, those yeah. sorts of things. Yeah, not not so much then because um, it was tough. If you wanted to stay in touch with somebody, you had to actually write a letter to somebody in 1985. Um, but by the time, I guess by the time 1995 rolled around, you could email somebody. Mm. Um, so you could stay in touch if you met somebody at a convention. Um, and, and, and that way... Um, yeah, so so more recently, a lot of going to the shows is about hanging out with friends. Um, you know, let's grab dinner afterwards. Um, you know, more more uh, not not making demands on the artist as far as I want your you know I want your ink on my paper. <laughs> um, but also um, towards the end of the run of when my kids were coming with me, I started doing these large sheets on a 14 by 17 Bristol pad. Um, one of these guys. Yeah. And I would mark off little card size squares and then I would do a whole sheet at each show and I would get stuff like that. <laughs> Wow. And get about 15 sketches on a page. Uh, who, who did the Conan on that page? That was Tim was Truman. Truman? Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I thought that was Tim Truman. <laughs> yeah. yeah, his style is uh, kind of unmistakable. I didn't want to guess and be wrong, but, uh, <laughs> but that's awesome, though. And, uh, you know, we might as well show that one uh, One of the uh, artworks you gave me was a, uh, a set. It was the last sketches. one I did, yeah. Yeah, this one right here. And the difference between that one and the one I just showed you is that since since the beginning, I said, you know what? Instead of just having random characters on the page, as nice as they may be, let's have some sort of theme. So the one that you have showing there is Captain America and Friends. Um, so the first person who drew on that sheet was Scott Hanna, dead center there. And he jumped right in and did Captain America. And then just randomly, everybody picked the character. Um, and somebody said, oh, do the invaders count as friends of, of uh, Captain America? I was like, yeah, absolutely. Because Daryl Banks was raring to draw Submariner there. And, um, you know, and so I, I think it's nice when there's a theme to hold it all together as opposed to just random characters on a sheet. Um, and the first time I did one of those was actually at Baltimore, and that's probably about ten, eight or ten years back, and I got rocketeers all over it um oh yeah and That's then the hilarious. last couple prior to the captain america ones uh there's a big free comic book day at the joe kubert school in jersey mm -hmm. 
And they always have a whole bunch of students as well as other artists and instructors there. And coincidentally, when they had the free comic book day, there was a new Marvel movie the last couple of years each year. Um, this year, Guardians of the Galaxy 3 came out. Last year was Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness. And so each time, I, so I themed it with the movie, and I gave latitude, too, because they could do movie or comic characters. Wow, that's fun. And so how, many yeah. of these, how many of these have you gotten uh, accomplished over the years? I've got about 20 of those pages wow. now because wow. each year I would – for about five years running from about 09 to 2015, I would get one at New York Comic Con, at uh, Terrific Con, Garden State Comic Fest, and uh, and Baltimore. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so I was getting, for about five years, I got four a year. And then strange thing happened. Um, the artist wanted to get, you know, a lot of these were, were gratis. The, right. the drawings because they were usually little quick headshots mm -hmm. um but then you know ebay and the internet kind of ruined things and and people flipping artwork kind of ruined things people flipping artwork <laughs> definitely ruined things yeah that's a that's e a, a recurring thing of course but yeah that's uh um, that, there was a point in time when the artists kind of revolted on doing the free free sketches right so yeah and, and hey i understand you're you're asking them to work you know, even if it's fun work that they love doing and they couldn't imagine doing anything else, it's still work. Um, you know, you wouldn't invite, uh, you know, if you're a baseball fan, you wouldn't invite Pete Alonzo over and, and ask him to, to hit batting practice for you if you invited him to a barbecue. You know, he'd want, he's thinking he's there to have a burger, not to, not to work. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Not so, a, yeah, so initially some of the pay pieces, you know, were extravagant. They were $5 a piece or $10 a piece. Um, but now some of these card size pieces, some of the artists, it, it gets way up there. It could be $250 or $300 a pop for a little card size piece. And I usually budget $50 a square. Because <laughs> um, there's 15 squares on a page, so it's still for a whole page, it's $750 then. So it's oh, not yeah. an inexpensive prospect. Um, but yeah, the last couple of years, I wasn't finishing them off, um, just because, um, cost, but also logistics. Cause it is, like you said, if you have six pads, you can go in six different directions, but if you have one pad with six squares on it, you got to wait one, two, three, and you know, until everybody's done. And mm -hmm. I'll, I'll say this, everybody who does these is very conscientious. They're not, you know, mailing it in or, or, you know you know putting a thumbprint on there and saying okay i drew something for you that's it go away kid you're bothering me um right no well they you know they can see that uh especially i mean i assume you've gone back to certain artists during that time period yeah. you always try to okay so they so they knew what you were doing and and uh but that's cool i mean we see things like that and those yeah. uh somebody mentioned uh you know rick welch said time capsules it's very true i mean you look at our hobby and you can see kind of the evolution of convention sketches and certain things like that that you really won't see too often anymore. Um, you know, just because yeah. they're like you say, they're kind of unaffordable. And at the same time, uh, you know, something like that's going to take you from the beginning of the show to the end. If you're there for a two or three day period. Yeah. And if you don't hit up some of those artists early, you're, they're not going to have time to sketch those because now there, there's right. so many more people getting convention sketches. Now you could never complete a 15 uh, piece grid you know, on an yeah. 11 by 17, it's just not, it's not practical anymore. A lot, a lot of people now do, you know, take pre-show lists mm. and then they'll do limited stuff. They'll do small stuff like this. So I, I'm at, I'm at an advantage in that they won't do a full on commission, but to do a little two by three square, um, at Terrificon, there were a couple of guys who, Oh yeah, I'm done drawing for the day. I said, and I would show them the sheet. I said, I just wanted to get a little two by three square. Oh yeah, give me the give me the board. I'll do something for you. Um, so they're good about that because usually they're thinking, oh, you know, they you want Batman fighting the Joker with the Riddler hanging off the roof, and you know, and Catwoman. Yeah, I'm here still. Okay. Um, so yeah, if you just need a face, like again on the Captain America one, a lot of the artists. Um, didn't want to go back and do Captain America. I wouldn't have mind if it was a whole sheet of Captain America. 
because mm-hmm. that, that would have been very cool seeing everybody's interpretation. But um, everybody, I, I basically said you could do any, I said any Captain America character, you know, that you would like to do. And so we got some deep cuts there. We got Batrock the Leaper in there and, and uh, Arnim Zola. And, you got Modoc uh, in there too, right? I think I got uh, Modoc, yeah. Kazar was admiring how uh, how wonderfully beautiful uh, Modoc's eyes were in there, a, 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 <laughs> b- better than all the others, right? I mean, and look at the the Finch Spider Woman is fantastic. Yeah, he he asked me. He said, does, "Does you know somebody who's in the New Avengers with Captain America count?" I said, "Yeah, they were a teammate of his. Anybody he says, okay, I'm going to draw my favorite character from the New Avengers." And I was like, "That sounds great," and. You know, I got, I think I got a, a, a great little headshot because it was a character he was a little more invested in than just, oh, yeah, I'll do another Captain America for somebody. Yeah, and not, not a lot of times, a lot of times when I've asked artists to draw something, I, you know, I come up and I'm, I'm blank. I don't know what I want. And I'll say, who's your favorite character that nobody ever asked you to draw? And, you know, some people be like, oh, I'm a big fan of this character, and but nobody ever asked me. Like, and I feel like, okay, I'm going to get a better sketch that way because it's something they don't get a chance to do, and, uh, mm-hmm. and now they will. <laughs> so, um, you know, going to shows in the last 10 or 15 years, have you made friends in the hobby that you see regularly at some of the shows? I mean, if you're yeah, um, it sounded, sounded like you have a circuit of shows that you go to fairly regularly. Yeah, usually um, I, I haven't made it to Heroes. I would love to get there, but I'm sort of the reverse of you in that because it's Father's Day, I mm-hmm. stay here to be with my dad and my kids then get to be with me and their grandfather. Um, so I've missed out on Heroes. Eventually I'll get there. And um, so, yeah, usually in the spring there's a, um, uh, a big Apple show in March. Mm-hmm. Uh, there used to be uh, East Coast Comic Con would be april um nothing's happening in may local per se and then in june is usually the big garden state comic fest show which is down in morristown new jersey um i sound like i'm <laughs> selling tickets yeah just tell us the date and the uh, URL and, um, and, I'll, and your, your july is terrific con which is um have you been to terrific con I have not, but of course it looks like a wonderful show. I mean, there's it a is, great guest lineup every single year. It's and at the, the, the resort, the Mohegan Sun Resort, and it's a big, fancy place. It's gorgeous. Um, and yeah, and it's it's kind of cool if you stay there because then it's sort of like you're in a comic book bubble. You know, everybody's, everybody's there. Um, so it's a lot of fun. Um, just trying to think what happened in August. Was there a show in August? I don't remember now. Um, and then Baltimore's Perfect. next weekend. Yeah. And then a month later is New York. And um, there, there are, you could go to a show every weekend. There's so many shows going on. If you, if you want to travel crisscross the country. Um, so these are just the shows that I could drive to that are, you know, within, you know, three, four hours driving time. Um, and November there's Rhode Island comic con. Um and then in January starts the stuff in Florida. You get um, what's MegaCon and OAX. Um, my show's starting in January. Yeah, yeah. So there's going to be. I, I hear you. It's so uh, you know that's uh, kind of leads over to a question I was going to ask you. Was that um, uh, you know you do get a lot of sketches, right? So have you ever been into uh, or picked up uh, you know published pages? I mean, because I know I think most of the pieces there might be. A, I do one. have a few published pages. Um, and there I have, I think I have three. And at one point I had five. My first published pages that I bought way, way back in the dark ages when there used to be a store in New York City called Super Snipe Comics. Mm-hmm. They had a separate little store that had an art gallery. And I bought the last two pages of Logan's Run number one, which was George Perez and Pencils. And Klaus Jansen inks, and it was the last two pages of the story where he's um, it's an adaptation of the movie. So it's when he goes to the central computer and it takes away the rest of his life so he can pretend to be a runner. So it was a lot of a lot of uh, 
it was two pages of of twelve page grids. Um, so it wasn't too too exciting, but it was George Perez at that point when I bought it was my favorite artist. He drew uh, he drew the Avengers, which was the book that made me a collector and made me a reader. Uh, and got me into the history of the characters. And from that, I started reading the great comic book heroes and the Storenko history of comics. And so I knew all about the Gold and Silver Age, even though I hadn't read any of the actual comics. I knew the history behind it. I knew all the creators. Um, I just think it's impressive that in 40 years of uh, you know meeting artists, getting sketches, that you've, you've bought five published pages and all of that. I mean, that's, yeah. that's pretty impressive. And, and the thing is, you know, the art dealers were, were around. Um, so oh, yeah, like absolutely. Yeah. Them, but but your uh, your passion kind of what, what revolved around being able to meet the creator and get yeah. them to draw something for you. Yeah. Is- I mean, sometimes I wish I had thought about it back then when I could have picked up. I probably could have picked up a Perez Avengers page Mm -hmm. back in the day when I was at those shows. I probably could have gotten something inexpensive. Um, Just didn't think of it at the time. I was, I was more interested. Yeah. in meeting the artists and having them do something specifically for me. Um, So the other three pages. So the, the, the unhappy ending to that story is at some point, because I bought those two pages for 30 bucks. And a couple of years later, at a convention, I think I met somebody and and I told him I had these pages and I think he offered me a hundred bucks for the two pages. I thought, wow, I'm making seventy dollars, so I sold the pages. <laughs> and not so much not because deal. they're they're worth a lot more today, but just because it was the first published art, I I wish I had held on to it because of that. Um, and the other three pages are um, Dave Sim when he was doing Cerebus used to come frequently to New York. There were Every other month shows that this guy named Fred Greenberg used to run. Mm-hmm. I've heard of those. And, and Dave was at all of these shows to the point where I have a sketch where he had run out of cigarettes. And this is when you could still smoke in the hotel, <laughs> in the convention hotel. Uh, he's like, somebody get me a pack of cigarettes. And I was like, okay, I got you, Dave. And I came back and he drew me a Cerebus saying, thanks for the cigs. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I guess, I don't know how I ended up with it, but I got a page from Cerebus and it's from issue 20, which was an issue that he drew that if you tore the issue up, you could make a giant poster out of all of it. It made a giant figure of Cerebus, all the pages. Oh wow! So the page I have is, is like part of an arm and a fist. And the whole story in that issue, Cerebus is, is either asleep or hallucinating or in a drug induced hallucination. And he's talking to one of the, the gods of his, of his uh, era. And um, it was pretty cool. And, and I, I loved Cerebus. Cerebus, when I first started reading that, I thought it was so funny that I would specifically wait till the middle of the night so that I could fall asleep laughing, you know, and be just so happy <laughs> and from and and having read it. <laughs> On the proper note, that's awesome. But yeah, get, getting back to, you know, so absolutely in the last decade, because I've seen guys repetitively at shows and had the chance to go out to dinners and and hang out at, you know, sometimes um, uh, one artist that I'm somewhat friends with is Walt Simonson, who actually lives about 20 minutes away. And when my daughters were little, I actually was able to ask him to do like a chalk talk for their Girl Scout troop. <laughs> so, well, um, Simonson's the first guy to turn me down uh, when I went to. Uh, I was probably oh. fifteen years old, and I saw him at a show, and I yeah. asked him for a sketch because, and I was like, after I watched him draw a sketch, he's like, "Nah, kid." So, uh, you know, so <laughs> my my art collecting may could have started in the eighties, but it, I was shot down by Walt. I, I've since gotten many many sketches from him at shows, and never yeah, that, but. Uh, but yeah, I always look back at that day of uh, of dejection, you know, and just being like, "Dog on it." But um, but that's cool. But you know, what I want to know is what was what were the other two published pages? You, you okay, so yes, yeah, so it was Cerebus, and um, in it's nineteen eighty six, Matt Wagner was doing Mage, mm-hmm. and he was doing the first comic store tour for it, and I got a page from that first series. 
And um, yeah, I, 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 uh, that was back in the day where I don't, I don't remember what it was US Air or something. One of those cheap airlines, you could buy a ticket for 25 or $30. So I flew from New York to Buffalo and um, spent the weekend up in Buffalo and had some wings. And I, I got an original sketch from him and I got, I bought a page also, which I think the original sketch cost more than the, the page at the time. <laughs> Uh, it's hard to that, imagine. Yeah, Mage is one of my all-time favorite books. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, how I, I love uh, it, was, it was the right that was the era, right? I love the Elementals with Willingham. I love yes uh, Mage with uh, with Wagner on it. I mean, those uh, that was such a good time. All, all of those independent comics, it was like Marvel and DC were great. But then the guys who couldn't quite make it there, but had all these great ideas. There was Eclipse and Comico and and yeah. then First um, Pacific, and so there were just uh, comics were bursting at the seams, and the price of the books was still low enough that you could buy almost everything still. So you could read Spider Man and Fantastic Four and Hulk and American Flag and Rocketeer and Elementals and and uh, there was just a lot of good stuff. The Turtles came out then. Mm -hmm. um, when I was in college, I went to Rhode Island College up in Providence, and I made friends with the owner of the local comic book shop there, who two of the guys who worked for him went to Yale. And as they were about to graduate, he decided he was going to open a satellite store in New Haven, and these guys were going to run it for him. And one of the things they did as part of their grand opening month was they had Eastman and Laird there for a, a store signing. So I have a, Thanks. I've got a turtle sketch of the four turtles on a rooftop by the two of them, which I don't think I've ever seen stuff from both of them. I um, I have to go look on calf. I don't think there would be too many examples like yeah. that from, from any era. Wow. <laughs> so, to, to wend our way back. So, yeah, so I've made friends with people like Walt Simonson, Billy Tucci, Mark Sparacio, um, Koi Pham, um, John Snyder, <laughs> um, you know, and guys that, uh, um, you know, pop in and I only see them at shows, but then, you know, we would hang out after the show and have dinner and drink wine or whatever. And, um, you know, people like Barry Kitson, um, one of the sketches that you have there, the, the Black Widow mm -hmm. painting, um, that was the first time I met Barry Kitson, and that's about 11 years ago, I think, 2012, I think. And his only request for you to get a sketch was you had to wait online. You could have somebody hold your spot. You could go wander around as long as somebody held your spot. You could get out of line so you could go to the bathroom. Um, but you had to be online in some form. And there were about five or six of us online. And I made friends with the guy who was next to me waiting online. And um, at the end of the show, he introduced me to his girlfriend. And then a year later, I think, he reintroduced me to her as his fiance. And then a year and a half or two years later, I was invited to their wedding. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> All from waiting in uh, Kitson line. All from waiting in Kitson. And, <laughs> and again, part of the fun now is now there's stories with these sketches. It's a great sketch. It, it's a watercolor painting. It's not, a, it's not even a sketch. It's a watercolor painting. And while he was drawing it, Brian Bolland walked over and asked him, what's he charging for these things? And Barry explained that, oh, he's just asking people to wait online and he's doing them for free. And I, I can't do Brian's accent, but he, he, he shook his head and he's like, I don't understand your economic model. <laughs> <laughs> well, there wasn't one. <laughs> I thought that was great. <laughs> but we, basic, we did basically spend, that, at that point, Baltimore was a two-day show. We basically spent all day Saturday and Sunday waiting online. Because mm -hmm. as I mean, as you see, it's it's a watercolor painting, and he did, I think he only did six or seven of them that whole weekend, and so we were waiting online. We 
we were not the last ones. We let somebody jump the line who was only there on Saturday, who jump ahead of us from the line. Um, but we're like, yeah, we're here for the weekend, so we can we can uh, we can let you go ahead of us. Um, and yeah, more and more there's these stories at, at the at the tail end of um, the first half of my career <laughs> in collecting. Uh, there was a big show in New York City, and. Uh, it was a November show, and I was at a table, and there was a couple of placards for artists there, and somebody sat down, and I was like, that's not who the name card is. I know who this is, and that's not who it is. And I asked him, are you, are you doing any sketching? And he said, well, I just drove down from upstate, so um, I'm going to try and draw something. I'll see. And then he starts doing an Iron Man, and so I didn't. He decided that um, uh, he didn't like the hand, so he pushes it aside. And he starts drawing um, a three-quarter torso of a figure. And he's like, uh, I got to walk around a little. I'm still all wound up from driving down. I said, what are you doing with those sketches? He's like, uh, I'm just going to throw them away. I said, do you mind if I take them? He's like, yeah, go ahead. Help yourself. Um. And I'm like, oh, my God, these are so good. And later on, I ran into him talking to some other people. I said, um, Barry, do you mind signing these? Because I had a feeling it was going to be Barry Winter Smith, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so I have an Iron Man and a Conan that he, you know, he knocked out in a few minutes. And um, this wasn't happy with him. He, yeah. The Iron Man, he he messed up something on the fist, so it, all the fingers sort of bled into one another. And but you know what? I I now have a convention sketch that Barry Windsor Smith did, and it was so cool. And yeah, he did. He initialed them for me, so they're they're legitimate. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's, that's awesome. That's that's the fun now. There's there's stories that go with all this stuff. Um, well, why don't we some art then? I mean, because everybody was, uh, you know, before we got the show started, people were, you know, I used the graphic of the cap shield, right? Uh, yeah. So, and people were in the chat talking about, uh, you know, what a good idea that was and how much work that must have been. And oh, yeah. That must be a bear. So, uh, oh, you got, oh, and you have it right there. I didn't, uh, <laughs> didn't notice it. Look at that. Gilroy was here. Gilroy was here. <laughs> I think half of our audience doesn't remember Kilroy. <laughs> probably not. It probably doesn't. You got to hang anything. the fingers over the top, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, that's right. <laughs> that better. <laughs> much better. Much better. But uh, here, let me show the. I've got. I've got that photograph that we used here. But yeah, that's a. That's a great uh, uh, replica piece too. That's not cheap. Mine's like a. Mine's like a tin can. But uh, that thing is uh, solid. So. This was the Hasbro piece that they issued in 2016 for the 75th anniversary of Captain America. And, and even getting the shield was an interesting story, too. Um, I saw them at Toys R Us. And I think when they came out, they were, I think they were $400 or $425. So they're a little pricey, you know. Mm -hmm. Um. And I saw Toys R Us had it on sale, so it was it was uh, instead of three ninety nine, which was then the regular price, it went down to three fifty. I said, you know what? Let me check out this Amazon stuff and see if they have it. And Amazon had it, and you know when you when you buy something from Amazon and it says, uh, you know, there are new and used versions available from other dealers. Oh yeah. They had what they said was a used version. Um, I'm guessing what happened is that um, somebody bought it, and when their wife found out how much they spent on it, <laughs> they had to send it back. I got it for $200. Oh, not bad at all, boy. Um, and, yeah, and I haven't looked. And I brought it to a show that fall. My daughter was coming with me, and we met Stan Lee and got a picture with him. Um, so I have a picture of me, my daughter, Stan, and the shield. <laughs> and then um, at that show, 
my daughter actually volunteered to carry it around. And it's about eight or 10 pounds. It's not a light piece. And um, there were a bunch of guys who had been associated with Captain America who were at that show. Jim Steranko was there. Joe Sinnott was there. Um, and one of the last of the timely artists, uh, Alan Bellman, mm -hmm. was there. And when I asked Alan to sign it, I said, pretend you're John Hancock and sign it so big old King George can see it. <laughs> and and um, I is see it. that's the one that's kind of, uh, what, it's like this, 8 o'clock on the... Uh, on that photograph there, I think it's yeah. kind of under the Zek. Yeah, right over here. here and it. yeah, he wrote it big. And initially I was like, oh, I'm just going to get everybody to sign it. And then I realized if I do that, it is going to turn into, it's going to look like a Jackson Pollock. And there's just going to be so many names on there. You won't even be able to tell who's who. And I said, let me keep it just to people who did significant work on Captain America that you know that they listed on their resume so there's a couple of names of people on there who who didn't um you know adam hughes signed it um guy dorian um ed mcginnis but um at the time i started doing this everybody who was still alive um i pretty much have i got stan i got jim starenko i got both John Ramita's senior and junior, um, Mike Zek. Um, at this last uh, terrific con, I got um, um, Steve McNiven. Um, and yeah, and then the first little headshot sketch on there, uh, Mark Tixera asked if he, if he could draw something on there. I said, yeah, go for it. And with a Sharpie, he was drawing it and, and smudging it to get the look he wanted. And it just turned out wonderful. And then a couple other people said, you want me to draw something? So there's, you know, about six or eight pieces on there where somebody's drawn a little headshot. Um, but yeah, I've got about 55 signatures on there. Um, I've gotten um, Ms. Steve Engelhard and Roger Stern. Um, See Jeff Isherwood, uh, Joe Jeff Lindner, Isherwood, yeah, Tom, Tom Palmer, Palmer. yeah. Um, oh, John Beatty, Garney, yes, I got Garney. Adam Kubert, Jerry Ordway. Um, I mean, there's <laughs> there's just a, there's just a few on there, yeah. Uh -huh. um, not a whole lot of room, but I mean, I think there's some, a few more spaces that could be filled. Yeah, there's, there's about four more guys who I would like to get who would make me feel like I've gotten everybody possible. Mm -hmm. um, the, the two big ones on that list are John Byrne and Sal Basema. Those, those are going to be tough ones. <laughs> and those are tough ones to get, yeah. yeah. And, um, and then um, um, Ed Brubaker. And um, Rick Walsh wanted to know if you got Epting on there. I don't think we mentioned. And Epting, yeah, yeah. And and that that's those are. I mean, there's a couple other guys who worked on the book who you know wouldn't be wouldn't be unhappy if I got them on there. But those those four, I would feel like okay, I don't have to get any more. Um, and um, and yeah, unfortunately, a couple of guys have already. You know, besides Stan's passed away, you know, mm -hmm. John Ramita's gone now and Joe Sinnott. Um, you know, so uh, Alan Bellman. Um, there was another one of the timely artists, Ken Bald. I got his signature on here. Um, so, yeah, it's been it's been a lot of fun. And one of the cool things is, you know, people will walk up when I'm carrying it and they'll say, can I take take a picture? I said, you have a cell phone? I said, yeah, give me your phone and I'll take their phone and hand them the shield. And they're like, are you sure, man? <laughs> <laughs> and I'll take a picture of them on their phone with it. Um, and a couple of times it's been little kids where the shield is almost as big as them. And that's been the most fun, you know, some little five-year-old or six-year-old who's dressed up in cosplaying in their Spider-Man Halloween costume and, and, uh, 
So do you hang that on the wall when you're not taking it to shows? Right now, I've been just storing it in its box. I'm trying to figure out. I'm thinking of, of making some sort of like swinging arm bracket type of thing that I could put the straps over mm -hmm. so that if I want to take it down, that I could. Mm -hmm. um, one sec. Whether you call us, it's on your way. Put the other one. All right. <laughs> So, well, you, you know, I, you can't say it's impossible to get those, but, uh, you know, the remaining four. I, I, I think should be, Epting was at Heroes, so I know he, you know, he yeah. get the show. Epting, stuff. I think I've met at New York Comic Con a long time ago, I think. Mm -hmm. um, I think I, I, get, I got something from him before I had the shield. I got a sketch from him. Um, the two artists, Byrne and Basima, I know people who are good friends with them that I'm friends with. So I'm um, working on seeing if I can, you know, r wrangle a, a visit when they visit those people so that maybe I could do it. Um, yeah, Jim Warden should probably be able to set you up. I mean, he works with John. So yeah, how hard can it be, right? He sees them at least a few times a year. You just got to coordinate making it. Yeah, uh, and I, I almost had him a couple years back. He was at New York Comic Con, John was. Um, when uh, one of the artist edition books came out mm -hmm. and I had the shield with me and that was also when the Walt Simonson Star Wars artist edition came out and I, I bought, that. yeah, I was there at that show. I bought this, the Walt Simonson book mm -hmm. and they were sold out of the burn. They said, Oh, we only brought 20 copies with us. I said, that's not my fault. You didn't bring enough to sell. <laughs> I said, but I'm here and I did spend money at your booth. Can I, you know, can you, can you at least ask him if he would do it? And, you know, and the guy who was wrangling it wouldn't even ask him, which I thought was. I heard he turned down some other people for, for signatures after that. You know, yeah. I, I mean, if, if he said, he no, I'm not signing anything show. but the book, then at least it would have been from the horse's mouth. Right. Um, you know, that, um, that, that, that that's the case, but. Yeah, no, no, I know, and I know Sal probably isn't going to get out to shows too often anymore. Um, he's he's isn't he eighty or eighty five? He's up there too. He's, so yeah, he's up there. I can't he's remember. probably not traveling. I'm yeah. hoping, like when I when I got John Ramita Senior, it was the one time that I let the shield out of my hands, and I gave it to a dealer who's doing a private signing, mm -hmm. and it was one of these things where they invited John to a hotel that was near Newark Airport. <laughs> And he was going to spend the afternoon signing stuff. And then they were flying to Vegas where they were based. And I was like, I got to, you got to be there and pick up your shield before we leave or we're taking it with us. <laughs> I said, absolutely. I'll be there. Not a problem. Oh, well, that was, that, but again, I, I love it. I, when I saw that photograph, I'm like, we're talking about that. I don't care what art you send me. We yeah. Talk about the shield. Yeah. It, it's a great conversation piece. And, and, um, at Terrificon on the first day I was there, I walked around carrying it around and I had forgotten because it had been a while since I had carried it around that. And, and I was holding it in that position where, you know, you have your arm mm -hmm. up. So it's in the appropriate position. And I'd forgotten how heavy it was and, and how much work it is to do that for six, eight, ten 10 hours carrying it around. You're not going to do that again, right? <laughs> Can't you throw um, it on your back? Just carry it like a backpack. That's what that's what I got to figure out is a way to sort of hook some bungee cords to it so that I could could loop around my shoulders and then just carry it around my back. The other thing yeah, is I've talked to a couple of people about getting some sort of acrylic over it mm -hmm. uh, so that it protects, you know, people don't bump into you if you're carrying right. it around and well, you don't potentially smudge it up. Yeah, it's I mean, it's in such great shape. It's amazing that you haven't already had some kind of. Uh, scrapes or damage to it so yeah. yeah and and yeah when when i did buy it on the very like inner edge of the shield here there's two little dots where the paint didn't touch so that was why it was used i guess mm -hmm. <laughs> but i got it like i said i got a bargain at it and it was something that i really wanted and it's turned into a lot of a lot of fun both collecting the signatures and and seeing people's eyes light up when they see it and they'll be like oh is that stan in the middle Oh, wow, you got Storanko, too? Oh, you know, how yeah, many do you have on there? I'll show you my cheap one. It, okay. It was, it was a gift, but uh, we, we do have uh, Sam in the exact same spot. Uh, let's 
There you go. Yeah. Okay, that's cool looking. Yeah, it's all right. You know. Is that a Hasbro shield or was that a? Oh gosh, I don't even know. It's uh, no, it's not a Hasbro. I'm not sure who the. Uh, I threw the box out. <laughs> Sadly, uh, I can't read the. Uh, it's got like a hollow foil on there. It says uh, like Radic Sports or something. I don't know. That's don't know. that's probably the authentication on the signature. Ah, uh, you're right. You know, because there was a photograph I got with a stand signing. You know, yeah, a, a pile of these. So, <laughs> so there you have it. But it was a gift. So oh, uh, that's can't, nice. You complain about that. You can't um, complain about a gift. That's no. for sure. And I saw, uh, you know, I always link people, you know, your calf gallery when we're doing interviews. And I saw, you know, Rich Danny was uh, wondering when we were going to see the Dave Stevens because he said that wasn't in your calf gallery. And he also was lamenting the Barry Windsor Smith. I don't think he gave me the Barry Windsor Smith ones, but I know that you did send me the uh, the Dave Stevens. I, I can just go ahead and jump to that since I know that uh, we sort of, you know, you already mentioned it. So we might as well take a yeah, look. Yeah. Here. So there you go. That's the ballpoint pen Dave Stevens. Yeah. 2001 that's nice hey you can't complain about that and it's, it's yeah nice. i mean and i got to talk to him for a couple of minutes because it was a preview night and there was almost no fans in the house for that back then um because the dealers were still basically setting up mm -hmm. so i had a nice conversation with him and you know and and i'm sure because i had the conversation with him when i did ask if he could draw something it wasn't like I just walked up and said, hey, man, draw something for me. Yeah. So it was, it was much nicer that way. Well, I agree with you, Rich. I mean, uh, very consistent on doing those, but uh, he did a yeah. lot of them. I wish I had gotten one. I can tell you that. Yeah. I mean, I, I regret a couple of people that I missed out on that. You know, they were like, oh, I'm leaving now. I'll catch it the next time. And then, unfortunately, there was no next time. Um, but, you know, but I have, I got so much cool stuff. I can't really complain about the the, the handful of people that I missed. Sure. Um, and, yeah, uh, I, I think ultimately I sent you 21 pieces. And even that, um, I had scanned to send to you, I think, about 40. And that was including not finding one of my books that I wanted to send, scan some stuff out of to send to you. There can always be a part two, Michael. I, I'm a, I'm up for it. Yeah. yeah we, we all love looking at art. Uh, you know, it does. Uh, it's, we yeah. can always do this again. Trust me. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. So why don't we, yeah, I'll move over to the next piece. So tell me about this one. Okay. So a couple of years back, um, there were, two shows that were fairly close together and Barry Kitson was going to be at both of them. And his commission list was open for both. So I said, yeah, um, I'll do a commission at each one. And I've always loved the Mr. Miracle character. Um, and I always liked the, the way the armor looked, the armor look of big Barda and so originally I was going to get a, a one off of each where it was each character. And since there are a couple, he said, well, do you, do you want me to draw it? So they're together because he had drawn the first one already. And then there was one or two background figures in that. And then he decided he didn't like the layout of how the two look together. And um, it was a long waiting period, but it was, these were originally just single figure of each of the main characters. And he turned it into a wraparound cover basically. Um, and yeah, it was a long wait. I think, I, I think I waited between two and three years for it. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was gonna say, this wasn't done at a show. No, no, this was a take home. This was, uh, it was one of those where, Oh yeah, I'll draw it for you and have it ready for you at the show. And, um, you know, and then each time I would see him in a show, oh, sorry, still working on it. Oh, I didn't like what I did. I'm going to redo it. <laughs> and I was like, okay. I mean, at, at that point, pre COVID, um, you know, I was seeing, seeing Barry at shows three or four times a year. Mm -hmm. So it was like, you know, I'll get it when I get it. Um, the longest wait 
and, and another piece that I didn't get to scan for you was a painting that I got from Tommy Castillo. And what I asked him to do, I said, do you remember the movie Jason and the Argonauts? There's a scene where they're on the Acropolis and he's fighting these skeletons with swords. And I asked him if he could do something sort of, you know, relating to that. And um, he had a girlfriend at the time who ended up disappearing on him and ran off with his ledger book. So he didn't know who he owed what to. And uh, later on, his, his uh, new girlfriend was trying to, to get everything in order um, and kept telling me, it's coming, it's coming. And literally, years went by. It, it ended up, it was between five and six years before I finally got that piece. Um, and at that point, Twitch can't, had come about and he was doing live paintings on Twitch. Mm -hmm. And I was watching while he was painting my painting. Oh, and nice. he's like, oh, my really good buddy, Mike's been waiting such a long time. I'm going to work on this and get it done for him. And, and I thought, and to me, just that he said that, you know, that was very cool. Did but what was funny is that he sent a message while he was uh, on Twitch at all. Did, yeah. Did, did, yeah. He, did he know you were in the audience? Yeah. Yeah. He knew I was okay. there and he carried it over. He spent, I think 90 minutes working on it on that live session. And then the next day when he, or next week when he was doing it again, he was finishing it off and he's like, Oh, I got to finish this off. Cause I got to get to the next piece. <laughs> <laughs> Well, at but, least he got to it. But he got to it, and it was he's supposed always, to be. He's always a nice guy. I, I saw yeah, him. yeah, he was a great guy, and and his 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 wife at the time, Samantha, is still a friend, and um, she's going to be at Baltimore, and I'll get to hang out with her, and um, and she's a great artist too. And I, I picked up a a huge piece from her last year. I got to remind her. I gotta gotta get it from her, <laughs> and. Um, uh, yeah, and, and the painting was supposed to be like a 9 by 12 I think, originally, and then it ended up being um, uh, like a 13 by 19 by the time he was done, when he finally got to it. And you're happy um, with it, right? Yeah, yeah, I love it. I got to figure out how I want to frame it, what's the best way to do it. I, I think he, he did it on a like a masonite board. So, um, and then the last piece of of art um well i got a portfolio from tom grindberg uh, who is living living off in um in soviet georgia <laughs> um and he's been doing a lot of um conan-esque type stuff and yeah. a lot of buck rogers Love his stuff, yeah. and he did this great portfolio and what he was doing was one of the plates he would hand paint for you. So that turned out nice. And um, do you, do you have a time limit that we have to, to do no, here or no, not at all. I'm, do I look at, I, okay, no, no, I just, we, I just, no, we, I didn't know if you wanted to wrap it up or hours. go on for another hour. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. No, no. Well, that's, that's kind of, trust me, if, if it needed to be done in an hour, we would have been motoring through the artwork. Right. Uh, we usually talk, we're, we're like right on, I, or I'd say, perfect pace here, Michael. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, but uh, but no, that's great. I mean, I, I how did you pick Tommy to do a, uh, yeah. a Ray Harryhausen uh, image? I mean, that's – what or did it just come to you at that moment? Is it something you guys discussed before? He, 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 had, he, do, he had done – he's since passed away, yeah. I guess, you know. Um, he had done a lot of horror stuff, so we'd done a lot of things with, you know – Dripping fiends and whatnot, sure. and he had done he had done this great Batman painting for me in one of my sketchbooks. Where what was cool about it is that it's instead of you know the the Dark Knight detective being out in the dark, it's Batman in the desert, which is something kind of different you don't see too often. Mm -hmm. And um, just plug it in the phone because the battery's starting to go on it. <laughs> Okay. We can't have that. You turn yeah, that's why I was going to use the tablet originally, because uh, 
I thought, okay, it's fully charged. Hang on, let me put this down and then I can come around. No problem. Okay, there we go. There we go. Back to live action. <laughs> um, so I think some of it might have been that also that I probably had just seen the movie on TV. I'm a big movie fan. And um, uh, my degree from college was in film studies. So um, I my go-to TV channel is Turner Classic Movies. So, yeah, some, something like that is sort of like the sweet spot. Mm -hmm. um and yeah he loved the idea and um yeah it just took a long time to get to it but it came out great and it was well worth it and um yeah i, I was very happy with it uh which which interesting sort of leads into where I, my head is at now as far as getting sketches um i was thinking about when um a couple uh well it's, it's about a about a decade already, my, my grandmother passed away and she was 103 at the time. And I got up to speak and I told the story how all of the six grandchildren, as we were growing up, we used to stand back to back with grandmother to see how, how big we were getting. And it was, you know, a big achievement when we were finally taller than her. And she was a very petite woman. She was about 4'10 and 87 pounds. <laughs> so it was a big deal when we got to be bigger than her. And, <clears throat> excuse me, um, so at the funeral, I said, now we have a new goal, you know, she lived to be 103 years and had a wonderful life, and now we, our goal is to do the same and, and, you know, break the century mark. So I, I've always jokingly told my friends, I'm going to live to be 125. Um, I said, you know, as long as, as long as the brain works and I can move around, then, you know, why not? Mm -hmm. Um but that made me think recently about as much as my kids kind of like my stuff, they're not the same fan that I am. What's going to kind of happen to my stuff when I get there, when I get to 125. And I thought, I love all the superheroes and I'm still going to get superhero sketches, but I love a lot of other things. Why don't I get sketches of other stuff? And um, I'm not sure. I think one of them that I sent you was an almost an all black picture with it's a single figure. It looks like he's drinking a martini and holding a gun. Yes. And that is William Powell from the Thin Man movies. You know, I thought that's who it was. And I, I just thought, no, nah, there's no way you would have picked uh, <laughs> the, the Thin Man films are some of my favorite. I mean, my, my, yeah. my mom and dad watched those every time they would be on on a Saturday afternoon. Uh, right. I got to watch Thin Man. And they, they were they were all fantastic. You could watch them over and over again. Yeah. I mean, I, I love them. I watch them. Every time they're on, I watch them. Um, and I, I just realized when I was scanning it to send to you that I don't think the artist signed it. I don't see a signature on it anywhere. No. And, no. and it was by Dennis Calero. Oh, cool. And, and um I, Dennis was one of those guys who I met in a bunch of times at shows and I had gotten some some sketches and some remarks on prints. And then um, you know, we had lunch one time and we were sitting talking and I think we started talking about old movies and I asked him if he'd be interested in doing something like this. And this is a while ago already. I've had this piece. I, I've got to have had this at least six or seven years now. Um, and um, so, yeah, so I was thinking about how about getting stuff? I, I love movies. I love music. Um, how about doing stuff, you know, maybe mixing mixing and matching stuff up? Mm -hmm. um, last year, um, is, the, is the Blue Angel piece in there? I forgot if I put that in. Yes. That was from last year. John Snyder did that. And that's a, a, a classic image from the movie poster and from the movie itself of Marlena Dietrich in the movie, the blue angel where she plays Lola, Lola. And, um, if you've seen blazing saddles, that's, they, they make fun of that. Um, where, where she's singing with a, in blazing saddles, she's singing the sexy song about how tired she is. Cause she's having, <laughs> having too much. <laughs> yes. 
no, nope, I do remember that. Uh, <laughs> Schneider's, Schneider's great. So, I, you know, it's a very nice piece. And, um, and yeah, so um, usually I only see John maybe once a year at the show, but we, we're friendly. We talk on the phone every now and then. And I said, it just sort of came to me because I watched the end of the movie White Heat, which is a James Cagney gangster film. And that's the classic scene where he's he's at the top of a of a gantry on a like a chemical plant, and it's this flames behind him, and the police are shooting at him, and the shots blow up the gas tank behind him, and it just explodes in a fireball. Um, and that's and that's where Ka the classic line is: uh, "Top of the world, ma." <laughs> And um, so for this this coming show, John's doing a piece of of that of Cagney on the top of the gantry with the plane behind him. Yep, top of the world, ma. Rich knows what you're talking about. And um, and then I think also for pickup at the show, um, one, one of one of my buddies is Koi Fam, and he's done a bunch of cool stuff for me over the years. And he, he was very upset that I didn't have any of his stuff on the, my, my calf page. <laughs> but as you see by the dates on there, I haven't updated it in quite a while. So after, yeah, after Baltimore is done, I'm going to have to pick up the pace here a little because it's been a decade, I think, since I added anything. It was wow. one of those things where, because I, I think I did three whole sketchbooks worth of stuff mm -hmm. plus some loose pieces and I did it like all in one quick or not so quick stretch, you know, spent four hours or whatever, just doing it all. And I was like, oh, I did it. <laughs> Every quote says 2010. Yeah. Yeah. It's been, a, it's been a minute. It's all right. Every, every baker's dozen of years, I should update my page. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You are due right now. And you've, what, you've got, uh, I don't know, four months. Yeah. yeah. And um, so, Another movie that I saw last August was the Akira Kurosawa film Yojimbo, mm -hmm. which um, was Americanized into a spaghetti western, but the original one had Toshiro Mifune in it. And there's a scene in that film where he sneaks up and climbs up into a bell tower. And it's a very Japanese bell tower. It's just like a skeletal frame holding a bell. And he's up there kind of looking down on the two different factions fighting it out. And he's figuring out, you know, how he can take advantage of this. And I just thought him up in the bell tower was a really cool shot. Um, so, yeah. So come Saturday, I should be seeing, uh, seeing a drawn version of what that, what that looks like. Um, so I'm excited about that. And then, at Baltimore this year, they do every year they do a yearbook, and this year's theme for the yearbook is um, 40th anniversary of First Comics. And three of the maybe five big art guns from that era are going to be at the show. Steve Rude's going to be there, Mike Grell, Howard Chaikin. Um, and interesting, I didn't realize at the time, um, John Snyder was Tim Truman's assistant at that time. Mm. And helped him on the Time Beavers graphic novel. <laughs> and, and as well, John also did, when First Comics did the classic comics, he did two adaptations. He did um, The Secret Agent and uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. And um, uh, Dean Haspiel was Howard Shakin's assistant. Hmm. And um, so I figured Howard probably wanted to do Ruben, but... Um, I thought if I could twist his arm and get him to do a Raul the Cat, then then maybe Dean can do a uh, a Luther Ironheart there for me. Um, sure. So yes, I've been contacting people and and letting them know that I'm putting this together, and I have about eight or ten people lined up to do stuff, and um, keeping my fingers crossed that you know logistics work so that I can move the move if I can get you know because it's fifteen squares. Um, I would love, he's not at the show. Usually he's at Baltimore. Tim Truman is not going to be here this year. Um, but I figured if I save a square for him to do a Grimjack, 
Um, I only have to get 14 squares done. <laughs> and if I can get one from Grell and Rude and, uh, and Shaken, uh, oh, also Mark Wheatley and Mark Kempel are going to be there who did the book Mars for first comics. Mm -hmm. And um, you get your work cut out for you. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be going to be, uh, but I, I've been having fun because I also like I, when I was talking to Koi about doing the the your Jimbo piece, uh, I told him about doing the the jam piece, and I asked him if he'd be interested in doing one. He said, "Oh yeah, I'd love to do Badger." I was like, "Okay, done." <laughs> yeah, so. I got I got a question from the audience from yeah. Marcus. He's asked, uh, "Will OAX have these small sketch ops? We've actually uh, are going to have a free sketch on uh, Sunday, a period of time where we've, we're going to ask every uh, you know guest, and they don't have to if they don't want to, but we we're kind of going to set up a time for just that very same same thing because free sketches have gone the way of the dodo in our hobby. And uh, Just about, one yeah. The, one of the things Kazra and I talked about, uh, and it was Kazra's idea, you know, the idea of trying to do, uh, you know, like two or three hour window where maybe at one hour you have, you know, a dozen artists who are sketching for free, you know, and they'll all do, be doing small stuff, of course, but, uh, but just something fun, just kind of a throwback to, uh, to kind of break up the second day of the show when people are looking for something different to do. Right. Because uh, you've already lined up all your uh, convention sketches and those sorts of things. So, yeah. you know, keep everybody interested and do something, you know, fun at the same time. Um, yeah, Joe State, uh, Joe State and E Man, yeah, very classic one there too. Yeah, Joe usually is at Baltimore, but I don't think he's listed as being there this year. So I don't know if he if he decided not to come or if he didn't get invited. But he's usually at um, the Garden State show that's in June. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm all. I used to be like I have to get the sheet done at the show. And if I didn't get it done, I felt like, oh, I didn't accomplish, you know, what I set out to do. Right. Um, but since the idea is to is with a specific theme, I feel like I got a little more leeway. If I don't get it done, um, you know, it, it's very easy. You know, wait till next year, and I'll get Joe, and I'll get Tim, and you know, and whoever mm -hmm. else. Um, you know, I was I even reached out online um is a facebook group for frank brunner and i thought you know i don't necessarily want to mail something with a lot of art on it off but if i could get frank to do a sketch card i, I would risk it you know send return mm -hmm. return uh, fedex packaging for it and um uh, and see um but some of the other people who who worked on the books have sort of vanished from the industry. So um, there was uh, a book called Shatter, and there was a book called uh, Dynamo Joe, and um, um, and even uh, well, with with the book that Brunner did, which was Warp, um, mm -hmm. I didn't realize the second half of the run of the book that um, Jerry Bingham did a lot of the art, and Bill Willingham even was in there. So those are guys who show up at shows. I could always maybe entice one of them to, to fill in a square. Um, it never hurts to ask, right? Oh. Yeah. The worst that happens is they say, no, you know, no, right. nobody's going to, going to draw a saber on you and, and chop your head off. <laughs> well, let's uh, look at, I think everybody's going to know the next artist here. This is uh, a, classic iron man right and I, I just love how it's both because of the, the way the eyes are it's it's very alive and and it's very static at the same time it's it's an interesting dichotomy um it's it's very to me uh like a russian icon like an old soviet poster type of thing yeah that's true and um that book that that's in I, I had picked up when it, when I filled up the first big black book, I bought another one that was comparable, but it was spiral bound. So people could lay the pages flat to draw in. And there happened to be, I counted, there were 78 pages in there. And I thought, you know what? 
78 is, you know, if you divide 78 by 26, you get three. So every third page, I put a letter of the alphabet and I went through the alphabet, A through Z. And I said, this is going to be my Avengers book. And I thought that because the Avengers encompass so many characters, it's almost everybody's been an Avenger at this point. Um, but I thought this would be a cool way to do it. And um, so, yeah, so I have a couple of Michael Golden pieces in there, similar. I think he did a, uh, a cap also that was very similar to the Iron Man in, in, in that it was a real tight headshot. And um, a bunch of pieces. George Perez was a machine when he went to to conventions. He would just draw and draw and draw and draw. And he would give out 200 tickets and say, this is all I'm guaranteeing. And then 800 drawings later, he'd say, okay, I'm done for the day. Um, and so I have a couple of George Perez's in my Avengers book. Um, Tom Rainey and Mike McCone, the, the Tigra piece is from there. Yeah. Yeah, that's really nice. McCone's that was that was one of the first pieces where um, when when the prices first started to inch up, this was I don't know if there's a date on that, but this was I think about 2013 or 14, and you know for for fifty or seventy five dollars you were getting a headshot, and there wasn't a whole lot to it. Um, but if you spent a hundred bucks or two hundred bucks, you got a real drawing then. Um, and this was again a full-on watercolor painting, um, and it's beautiful. And and he just he captured the the atmosphere, the character, just perfectly in the pose. Um, yeah, I've uh, I'm a huge fan of McCone's work, so uh, he and, he, and no wrong. Gotten, he he has just gotten better and better as time gone has gone by. I mean, this is a great piece, and this is you know whatever ten years old. But you look at the stuff that he's doing now, and it's just, you know, you you see it's still Mike McCone, but it's like, wow, he has just climbed up that mountain and gone up and up and up. <coughs> it just gotten better and better. No, um, I, I agree. And uh, we have another painted piece here. Yes, that one was um, Bohampton, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, yeah, I always loved the Edgar Rice Burroughs Martian books, and I remember being a member of the Science Fiction Book Club and and seeing the, the first couple of volumes had Frank Frazetta covers on them, and um, the last couple, I think, had Richard Corbin covers, and the books are just wonderful pulp entertainment, um, and I've always loved the characters, and they're just, they're perfect for comic books. I mean, they're they're the, the precursors to Flash Gordon and Buck Rogers, really. Um, you know, and, and anytime you got blasters and swords, it's always a good combination. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's very true. Uh, let's see. I know this this next one. I'm not, I don't think I was clear. Who is the artist on this one? Okay. This, this is another one where, you know, it sort of family comes into it. Um, the artist is Jay Muth. Yeah, okay. And um, at that time, I was in college, and there was a local high school show that always – the there was a comic book club that two of the English teachers ran, and they had contacts in the industry, so they always had a great roster of artists at the show. And I couldn't make this show. And my mom volunteered to go for me and take my sketchbook and she got a june brigman power pack with all the characters on it and she got the character the mask by mark badger with where he's being chased by a giant tank and then this piece and what was cool about this is that um john said that You've got to draw something on the page first to my mom. <laughs> so 
the the kind of triangle that's there, the cape, she drew the triangle in the middle of the page. And then he took that triangle and turned it into a drawing. And then when he was all done, he said, well, you helped create this drawing. You have to sign it too. So that's why there's two names there at the bottom. Because he, he asked my mom to sign it too. That's why I threw and, it out. Like Janet? This is yeah. <laughs> and, and again, you know, it's it's a great piece of art, but there's there's also a great story that goes with it too, um, and cool. and and a lot of a lot of the art that I have has little stories like that. Um, the first time I met Gene Colan was at one of these high school shows locally, and I was waiting my turn to get a sketch, and his wife leans in to me and says, like in a conspiratorial voice she's like you know he's charging for these right <laughs> <laughs> and and I, I i got a wonderful dracula headshot for whatever it was 20 or 30 dollars in you know 1982 um, and um and yeah later so your uh, daughter got to sleep under his table and so. yeah later on yeah she got to sleep under the table <laughs> Um, so yeah, it's, it's, to me, it's all about the connections with the people mm -hmm. and, and the, the art is a byproduct of it almost now. Um, because, um, like with the, with the, the white heat piece that John's doing, you know, we spent, I don't know, an hour, an hour and a half, just sort of, sort of tossing the idea back how we wanted it to look and what sort of, he, he's going to put the, the movie title and, Cagney's name on there also and he was um, looking at the movie posters that I'd sent copies of to him to figure out what was the best font to use and and yeah it was just great talking you know because we ended up talking about old movies that we liked for about an hour and a half and um, and yeah and by the way there'll, there'll be a, a picture at the end of it after sure. it, but um, but yeah to me it, that's a lot of fun to so Jason wanted to know, uh, and you already kind of answered this, that, uh, you know, why has it been so long since you updated your cap? It's more of a time. Time time is probably, uh, you know, the biggest biggest thing, right? And scanning and... Yeah, well, also, a lot of the art now, I mean, especially the, the, uh, the sketch card pages, what I did with those, I used an app that's on my phone called Cam Scanner, and I just snapped a picture, and it would flatten it out, and... and um, and mm -hmm. clean it up a little bit if, if there was a shadow on it. Um, my regular house printer just has a little uh, 9 by 12 plate. So most of these pieces that we've been looking at are, are much bigger than that. They're 11 by 14 or um, the Barry Kitson piece is a double page spread. It's, you know, it's uh, 22 by, by 17. And... Um, yeah, and the, probably the, in in there, there's one piece that I sent to you. Um, it's a big square, and there's like 50 characters on it. Uh, yeah, I can't remember which. Uh, it's I've got a Orion and Calabac fighting. Oh, right, right, right. Uh, let's see here. It's almost a square. It's like 22 by 24 inches. I don't know. Well, I've kind of got everything jumbled up in my. Uh, in your order there. Yeah, okay. I'm sorry. No worries. But yeah, right. I, I just I just don't have a scanner big enough, and and I don't have any Photoshop skills, so I couldn't scan each quadrant and then knit it together. So it was just easier to to take a picture of it and and mm -hmm. send you the send you a JPEG that way. No, I, hey, I mean it's uh, it works. <laughs> it, I get it. A lot of people use Cam Scanner. You, yeah. you know, posting to calf yeah it's uh because people don't know uh you know they don't know you know they don't have room to put a big scanner in their uh place or anything so yeah you know it's all good but uh here this is a, this looks like one of your more early pieces yeah this again th there's a little this this is got a little bit of a story with it too um it's it's al williamson and it's it's luke skywalker obviously 
Mm-hmm. And this was at a New York City show, and it's one of one of the hotels where there would be a balcony above the main room, and the balcony had tables where there were uh, artists or or dealers sitting. And I was walking around up on the balcony, and and Al was sitting at a table, just hanging out. And I recognized him, and I asked him if he was up to anything. He says, "No, I'm just waiting for my daughter." And I said, would you mind drawing something in my sketchbook? He says, I- I'd love to, but I don't have anything to draw with. And back then, I would carry a full pencil case loaded with all the various hardnesses of pencil leads. So, you know, I'd have an HB, a 2HB, you know, a 2H, 2Bs. And I would have a couple of micron pens. And so I handed him the pencil case. I said, pick out whatever you'd like and, and go to it. And so, yeah, so he drew Luke Skywalker coming around this big rock and there's Vader's shadow. And what was super cool is that, you know, uh, whatever was, uh, 15 years later, when the prequel trilogy came out, one of the images they had was of little Anakin walking past uh, a stone wall and there's a shadow of Vader. And it's like, hey, I've seen this picture before. <laughs> I said, I, I was there first. <laughs> that's awesome. So is this in a sketch? This is in that's, a sketchbook. That's there. in that big sketchbook, that first wow. sketchbook. Yeah. Phenomenal. Yeah, that's uh, that is very very nice. Uh, and this one, there's, there's another good one. Yeah, and Marshall. this this is a. Um, this was in the sketch. This is in the sketchbook, and I, I have a companion piece where there's a Joker like crawling out of a sewer, and he's got a, a, a Joker fish. Um, but to me, you know, I, I caught it just right when they were on the newsstand, and, and the Englehart Rogers Austin detective issues. Where you okay? And this one's from '86 as well. Yeah. And yeah, and Marshall was a great guy. He loved he loved talking. He would tell you all sorts of stories. And and um, yeah, by this point in '86, he was. I think this was just before he started doing Silver Surfer at Marvel, and he was doing some stuff at Eclipse. He was doing Captain Quick and a Foozle. Um, and but yeah, getting a Marshall Rogers Batman was sort of. Uh, now everybody talks about oh I, I got to get a grail piece I got to get a grail piece and I'm thinking yeah been there done that <laughs> I I've got Marshall Rogers Batman <laughs> um, yeah I, I've been very fortunate I've I've met enough of these guys and been to enough shows that um, yeah like like we were saying before we'll we'll have to do a part two and maybe even a part three because. Um, you know, buried in the collection. I have a Jerry Robinson Joker. Um, a real one. Yeah. So, yeah, that, no, exactly. That, that would be the thing. Dig up some of the uh, pieces that you have good stories with that are yeah. you know, artists like a Robinson that, uh, you know, are very hard to get. Uh, and obviously with uh, Robinson, a lot of people have a lot of trepidation picking up pieces these days because there's so many forgeries out there. And, uh Oh, I didn't even realize that. Yeah, no, I, I oh, met yeah. him at a convention when I, when I was going to a school out in the Midwest. Um, I was in Iowa, and I went to Kansas City for a convention. And at that convention, I got a sketch from him and some kid who decided he didn't want to go to medical school and was going to be a comic book artist named Jim Lee. <laughs> yeah, um, I know that kid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I... And and Jim had a great time explaining because he drew a close a tight close up of the Punisher holding a, a gun, which is what I asked him to do, like holding it next to his face. Uh-huh. And then he explained how there was you know there's light coming from this point. This is why this shadow here. And he was describing how all the lighting was working in the picture, and he was just having a blast explaining how he drew it the way he did it. Um. Now this next one, I you got it. I think it has some explaining. I think. <laughs> okay, this this one is kind of a ringer. Um, that is by my younger daughter Sophie, <laughs> okay. 
And we there's a, a band called the Fab Fow who are studio musicians who play Beatles songs as if, you know, the Beatles had the technology to tour properly. And they play it as if the Beatles had done it. So we saw these guys in a theater and we had signed up for the meet and greet with the band. And while we were waiting for the band to come out after they played their set, um, my daughter drew all this on the back of the poster that they gave us. And yeah, we, you know, in 30 minutes, she drew all that. <laughs> um, and then one of the guys in the band is uh, a drummer named Rich Pagano. And Rich apparently had gone to art school. And so the, the two of them then spent the rest of the, the meet and greet talking art stuff. <laughs> And it was very cool. Yeah, that's that's fun. That's fun. And, so you picked yeah, a little um, bit up going up, going to all those shows with you. And yeah, and on the other side of that, this is like the back of the the concert poster. On the other side is the is a you know picture of the band, you know, the Fab Four at the Wellmont Theater, and we got the band to sign up the front of it, and uh, and Sophie drew this on the back. It was very cool. That's awesome. Now, the next artist you mentioned uh, you're going to see this weekend. So uh, take a look at something. Yes, like that Rude. is Steve Rude. And lo and behold, it's another Mr. Miracle and Big Barda. Um, you know, um, Steve, Steve's, first of all, Steve's just great. You know, he, he could draw a picture of somebody reading the phone book and it would be fabulous. <laughs> um, that is very true. And he just he just seems to have a real affinity though for um, the early Kirby creation stuff. Um, when you see uh, Steve doing Cap or Thor or uh, any of the new gods, he he just and he has, I guess, the modern sensibility. So there's not the the blockiness and the stiffness that people who don't like Kirby complain about. Um, but there's definitely, you can feel the movement and the, and the animation in this picture. There's this, this stuff happening. It's not, they're not just, you know, have their legs splayed apart six feet or, or have, you know, uh, stubby fingers pointing at you. Um, and um, yeah, I, I love Steve. I try to run here, Michael. What's that? We joke about uh, some of those images as thigh gap. Right yeah. Now. Yes, it's uh, the the wider the thigh gap, the well, whatever. Uh, but <laughs> at any rate, uh, the more dynamic the picture, right? Exactly. But <laughs> well, the more uh, it's I mean, worth. <laughs> but yeah, Steve Rude stuff. I mean, this is this is a beauty. It really, it's really nice. And Steve, I had met. You know, this is later on. This is probably. Um, I don't know if he did it at a convention or did it. And I picked it up at a convention, but that's probably 10 years old, that piece. And, um, or actually there's a date on there, isn't there? Uh, 2015, maybe. Okay. So yeah, so it's eight years old. Um, but I think I first met him in the mid eighties at one of the conventions and we were sitting in like the hotel bar and, and, and I have a space ghost in my sketchbook in one of my sketchbooks that, um, while we're sitting having a, uh, a Coca-Cola, he drew for me, um, and just about every year he puts out a Kickstarter with a sketchbook. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm always there for that. And, and when I can, I try to get a, um, you know, there's usually some tier in the Kickstarter where you can get a sketch. Um, Cause the last couple of years, they, he hasn't hit as many shows. He hasn't been to the East coast. Certainly this will be the first time he's been to the East coast. Um, maybe since, since the show that I picked that up at, <laughs> Uh, that's true. I haven't seen him in a, uh, at a show in a while. It's been a minute, yeah. Yeah. Um, now here we mentioned this guy's name a few times tonight, George Perez. Yeah, yeah. Um, when this was early aughts, I guess mid aughts, and George 
had just come through something where temporarily he'd lost sight in one eye. And then when he was all better, he started taking on a lot of commissions. He wasn't ready to go back to penciling and inking stuff for, for, for the companies. And I have this, 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 I mean, the two pieces that I got were great. Um, and, and I just saw Marvel's been publishing a lot of, what I guess was fan art and using them as covers on books. And I'm sorry. I didn't let them know I had these because these could have been published easily. This is, this is cover worthy. Absolutely. Um, I always loved the, the Marvel captain Marvel. Um, and it sort of encompasses, you know, his whole career, you know, with, with the planets and space and Thanos. Yeah, this is beautiful. And and yeah, and it's George Perez, and and um, I have in in my Avengers book, I have maybe a half a dozen, you know, quick sketches. But it's nice to have a couple of finished pieces like this, where where you see why George Perez was George Perez. Yeah. No, I've gotten yeah, yeah I got to meet him several times. Uh, he, he always went to a show in Pittsburgh, so I yeah. get to see him uh, every year there, and. Did a hero initiative auction once where I got a really nice two character piece as part of that. And, oh, cool. uh, yeah, yeah, but he was always a lot of fun. And great, I, great, I, great I met him great. enough just at shows that you know he he was Uncle George. <laughs> 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 you know, and every time you know, and he he was just such a, a warm and friendly person. But every time I saw him, it was a big you know, he you know usually he would shake hands with people, but it's like no tugs. You know, it's a big hug time, George. <laughs> that is true. He, um, made, he made everybody feel special. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and um, this was one of the first bigger and, and also more expensive I mean, this missions that they did. Show, right? Was this a take home? This was yeah. This was not done at a convention. <laughs> um, and. Neil Volks, who penciled this, uh, is just one of my favorites. I always loved his indie character, Eagle, who's in the top right there. And he and Kurt Busiek did a great Spider-Man story, uh, like, uh, like a prestige book. And um, the guy who inked this, Jay Geldof, had done a long run on Grendel and had done... The, um, the the Spider-Man book with Neil and I just thought wouldn't it be great to have them you know fighting some sort of magical mystery villain sort of thing and having it uh, an impromptu defenders collection from across the companies sure now uh, I assume this one isn't in your calf right that one, yeah, that's if it's if it's after 2010, I guess it's not. Yeah, <laughs> I was, yeah, it's looking at the year, that's uh, so again, there's a lot of art uh, that, that we're not seeing, and you know, that was kind of part of the reason one of the big reasons I built CAF was because I knew there were so many great uh, pieces that were done as commissions, convention sketches, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. And uh, you know, and people were always so focused on only showing off their published work, right? You know, and, and a lot of people who were getting uh, commissions. Yeah convention sketches just felt like you know it's not worth posting them when everybody else is posting these great kirby published pieces and those sorts yeah. of things. i mean so published happy. pages are great but not but not every page is a splash page or or a dynamic storytelling page mm -hmm. sometimes you know pages have to serve the story and move the plot ahead and and it's not necessarily a lot happening but it's integral to, do, to the storytelling getting across right. so um you know that that that's the majority of the pages. Not every not every page is is uh, a fight scene, you know, or or a uh, or passionate embrace or or a killing shot. Um, so can be sometimes, but uh, yeah, I know what you mean. So this uh, this next piece is really nice. This was the first really big budget piece. I it was the first time I spent over a thousand dollars on a piece 
Well, you picked a, a good artist to work with <laughs> when you're gonna when he did it. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, and I, I had gotten I, a couple of smaller pieces, and I knew I really loved how his painted stuff looked. I had gotten yeah. some smaller, um, like headshot type of stuff that were mostly black and white, and I and I loved how he used color and. And the Vision and Scarlet Witch were some of my favorite characters because when I first started reading comics, it was Avengers, and it was the Steve Englehart era when they were doing the origin of the Vision, and at the end of all of that, he and the Scarlet Witch get married, and there's all this convoluted history, and it just sucked me right in, and it was it just so wonderful and fascinating, and I just I couldn't wait thirty days for the next issue to come out. Um, and then right at the tail end of that, George Perez became the Avengers artist. Um, you know, so that was, that was my, that was my golden age. Um, you know, the, the Avengers from about 129 to the 200. Mm -hmm. Is this in a sketchbook too? This, that is not in a sketchbook. That is a loose piece. Because that was something he he did and gave to me finished at at New York Comic Con. Nice. Yeah, I would have thought that uh, you know just the watercolor needed to be on something a little bit heavier. But yeah. gorgeous piece. I, Adi's just one of my favorite favorite artists. So yeah, this is yeah. a good choice of characters for him to work on. Yeah. Yeah. And he's he's been doing he's doing two new covers where he's homaging his own first works, uh -huh. where he, um, the the classic Iron Man and the three three point stance, and um, and then he's also doing the She Hulk bursting through the wall, and those are going to be coming out I guess in the next month or two. He's been posting work in progress on his Facebook page about it, mm. and uh, it's. It's just interesting how not only is he he's redoing, but just recreating from the ground up. It's the same picture, but it's not. Um, and, you know, again, it just shows how over 20 years that he's evolved and, and gotten to be greater. <laughs> I agree. Now, uh, this next one I used as kind of the background graphic, and I, I remember as the show was getting started, somebody asked if that was you in the background. <laughs> <laughs> yes, as, as I said, Neil, Neil is is one. Of, he's a friend, and I loved his character Eagle. And I would always ask him, "When are you bringing it back? When are you bringing it back?" Because it it seemed like you know the '80s boom characters were always you know popping up and coming back. Um, and he did a Kickstarter for it. And, um, it was supposed to be the first issue of, of hopefully a revived series. And the, the, the big top tier pledge was to, um, get a cover created that potentially could be used for the second issue. If that, if that happened. Um, so I said, I'm going to, you know, I'm the guy who every time I see Neil, when are you doing Eagle? When, 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 when? I said, I'm going to put my money where my mouth is and I'm going to. And by buying that top tier pledge, that put them over the top to, to do the Kickstarter. And um, I said, yeah, how about just you know, me and Eagle back to back fighting some ninjas. And he kept sending me the work in progress pieces. And it started out, there were four or five ninjas and then there was six or seven and then eight or nine. And so now it's kind of a running gag that, you know, when he, when he posts something, I'll say, it looks great, Neil, but you know, what's missing, you know, it needs more ninjas in it. Mm -hmm. Well, that um, came out really, really fun. And they, yeah, I mean, they did a great job uh, with with uh, on your likeness. With, yeah, with not really doing a lot of uh, work, right? I mean, it's a 
kind of a you know simple design, but boy, he captured your likeness. Hey, <laughs> yeah, he, he got it. <laughs> I, I thought it was you when I saw it too. So uh, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. And yeah, so the, the trick now is I got to figure out how to, to properly, you know, either frame or, or figure out a way to display them, maybe some sort of wire rig. Um, the main problem is that um, besides all the comic art stuff, um, I always had an interest in other art um, like MC Escher mm -hmm. and Maxfield Parrish and... Um, Carl Barks. And so I have large framed pieces of all of that hanging in, in the hallway upstairs. Um, and uh, yeah, so it didn't, it didn't leave a lot of room. So that, that's why a lot of this stuff is just, you know, in the sketchbooks or in the portfolio because there wasn't any place to put it. So I need a bigger house. Yeah. I need more <laughs> walls. <laughs> well, I think uh, that's a problem most collectors have, unfortunately. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh let's see so we got a couple of uh homages here next so uh, this this was cool I, I asked if he could do this is who was, uh who was the artist on this one was it's it? dan daniel hdr it's uh hernan de, Lo, de, de rocha I, think, I forgot how it's it's short for his full name hdr all right I um couldn't, couldn't tell on the on the signature I and I asked if he could recreate the, the cover, except I wanted the the more cockrumy um, Phoenix outfit because the the original cover she was in the Marvel Girl outfit. Correct. And he went to town on it because he added the Toys R Us thing on the top. And he even figured out because the original thing said you could win this comic could be worth twenty five hundred dollars. He found some calculator to, to figure out what the you know the nineteen whatever was seventy nine to to twenty seventeen what the inflation would be, <laughs> and <laughs> and calculated what it what it would have been had it been created to at that point. Yeah, that's funny. Um, that great. Now, is this a take home or something? That and yeah, that was that was uh, a pickup at a convention. Yep. And um, yeah, a, a couple of times hung out at shows, but un unfortunately, I think this this might have been like 2017 or 2018, and then um, he couldn't make it to New York the following year, and then the year after that was COVID. Um, so everybody's kind of kind of locked down and locked out um because he's a brazilian artist so th to get up to new york is a, is a little a little bit little bit of uh an expense definitely now uh let's see here another this is koi fam again oh. and um yeah i, I as, as i said I, I love the avengers um I love Barry Smith, uh, and I thought that Koi's style is different from Barry's, but could capture the essence of it. And then the, the, the cool little Easter egg is, if you look real close in the, the feathers on um, the Black Knight's horse above Iron Man, in, that, in the feathers there, he was able to put my initials. <laughs> Nice. Yeah, I, I, uh, I've always liked Koi's work. We've got him on the show. Uh, when do I have on the show? I think in November. No, oh, okay. Yeah, he's, uh, yeah, it'll, it'll be fun. I, I've liked his. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll tell him to make sure that he's prepared for four hours. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we, do, we do two hours with the artist, too, usually. Um, but, uh, but yeah, no, that, that's awesome. Now, I assume this was, was this a pre done piece or one that you asked him to do? It, no, this was this was a request. I asked if he would do do this for me, you know. And he also did a great recreation on a sketch cover of Hawkeye firing the bow right at you mm -hmm. with Ant Man on the on the arrowhead. <laughs> and um, I think that's off getting graded at CGC or something. So I don't have that. 
around right now. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm supposed to get a whole bunch of stuff back from CGC at New York Comic Con time. So um, absolutely, next time around, I'll have a whole bunch of sketch covers that I can show off and and whatever whatever I've gotten in Baltimore and New York. <laughs> And this is Neil being Neil going just Great. crazy there. I, I asked for um, Orion battling Calabac. Yeah. And with um, with a boom tube where, you know, you know, another character is popping out and he he put everything but the kitchen sink in there. We got got everybody in there and and that, and yeah, and that piece is huge. It's it's uh, it's like twenty two by twenty four. It's it's almost movie poster size. It's nuts. And um, what's the date on that? I can't uh, Fifteen. Okay, so for about four or five years in a row, I would do a big piece like this with Neil. Um, there was the the Doctor Strange, Spider Man, Eagle piece. Um, it was me and Eagle, that, but that was a Kickstarter, so that was kind of separate. He also, um, I had seen in his portfolio, he had done some awesome characters from The Incredibles. So I asked if he could do sort of um, the the scene where uh, <laughs> more kitchen sink. Yeah, but there's no ninjas in it, damn it. No ninjas. Um, so I asked if he could do there's the scene in the Incredibles when the family all sort of assumes the fight pose um, and they're in the jungle and um, yeah so I have that and and I have a piece actually he still got it because I think we talked about it and then COVID hit and he hasn't he hadn't been at any shows and I hadn't seen him in a while, but he finished and he showed it to me and then he scanned it and sent it to a mutual friend, Matt Webb, who's a colorist and, and Matt did a digital coloring of it. So I have two of the original black and white line art and, and a color piece. And I, I've seen them, but I don't have them yet. <laughs> well, this is uh, it's a beauty. I mean, Jay's a, a great person to be inking, uh, folks. Yeah, I mean, it's just they, they seem to work really well together, and I I uh, definitely like the, yeah. the inks on this one. For, you know, it's kind of classic, little little mix of a few different styles here, but yeah, this is a, it's yeah. a gorgeous piece. It's good to be friends I, with artists, isn't it, Michael? It, it yeah it, fe it certainly feels that way yeah I, I feel like in this piece what works so well is that um, there's it's it's sort of um, I'm trying to think of the musical phrase when things are antagonistic um, I feel that as great as the inking is on it they're pushing and pulling someone in different directions and that makes the piece so much better. Uh, because yeah, there's a little, little style this way, and then it's going in another direction, and um, and it just it's wonderful. I, lo right. I love it, <laughs> and I, and I actually I talked to Neil because I was getting all excited about getting all these pieces set up for Baltimore, even though Neil's not going to be there. I talked to him, um, like I was saying, um, you know, trying to incorporate some some other non superhero stuff into into pictures mm -hmm. and i thought this idea would be right in neil's ballywick because he he's a big horror meister he loves all the horror films and drawing all that stuff too and um i thought one one of the things i'd like to do is get different artists to make an illustration that isn't necessarily like the MTV image from a video, but something that seems somewhat personal yet universal from a video with a little clip of the lyrics um, 
lettered in underneath. And I thought, what would be better than Neil doing Vincent Price um, in the laboratory and at the bottom um, have the lyrics from the rap from Thriller that Vincent <laughs> Price did. Uh -huh. And I thought, and, and I, I loved because there was... Um, on Turner, they'll, they'll have these little um, mini bios almost where it's one star talking about another. And uh, is, there was one running about Vincent Price. And so it was showing all the different periods because he, he goes all the way back to the late 30s. He was with Errol Flynn and Betty Davis and uh, the private lives of Elizabeth and Essex. And then it's... Um, you know, he's in Laura, he's, and then it's, you know, in House of Wax is kind of where he becomes the Vincent Price that we think of. Um, and he was already 12 or 15 years into his career at that point. Mm -hmm. and, but I love the look from that, what he looked like there. So I, I wanted the Vincent Price of House of Wax sort of like madly gesticulating and have almost like a Frankenstein lab with lightning crackling around and, and bookcase filled with, with stuff behind it. And then at the bottom have the, the whatever it is, 50 or a hundred words of the, the thriller rap. I thought that would be a cool combination. Cool. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we have one more piece to look at too. And, okay. We're uh, down to the last one. Wow. Down okay. to the last one, the Murado. Yeah, it's and, a very and art this bow kind of uh, feel to it with the the hair down the right side to the to the lower. Right. Okay, so this this also you know has a bit of a story to it too, which is cool. Um, I was talking with this guy Thomas Nagovin, who runs um, Century Guild, which was like an art museum out in L.A. And Thomas has done a bunch of Kickstarters and it's um, a lot of different art books that he's produced. And we were talking and he said, we started talking about things that we like movies and comics and things. And he mentioned that he had talked with Esteban Morodo about, he, he'd actually hired him to do some pre-production drawings for then that might be a, a movie that he would do. Mm -hmm. Oh, your uh, your internet connection isn't connecting very well. Michael is frozen on uh, the green room. Cap, actually, and um, I sent him an email, and we started a conversation, and. Um, I said, I had this idea and that the reason that there's the, the head in the top left, the, I, the idea that I just tr was trying to describe to him was that, you know, Sonia's sleeping and she's having this dream and the dream is the action in the central, central part of the picture there where she's fighting the, the skeleton. Um, and he, he, um, he drew a preliminary pencil, which he, which he also sent to me when he sent me the artwork. Um, and, um, and it was just lovely. And, and his, I, th I think he actually, the, he used like gold paint on some of it there. And the coloring is just phenomenal. I mean, it, it looks Looking at it on the screen here, it looks great, but it doesn't do it justice, obviously, when you, when you see the piece in person. Um, That's beautiful. And, um, and the, the, the price was reasonable, so I said, you know what, I'm going to get two pieces. There was a, a piece that he had already done, but had been sold. And so I said, could you do something similar to that? You don't have to you know, reproduce it so you don't feel... 
No, Michael's internet. It's connection. okay if, if if I do my sexy Sonia, and it's like, yeah, sure, go ahead. And <laughs> so his his sexy Sonia meant that like half of her bikini tops shredded in in battle. <laughs> well, it's amazing that it held up as well. We were a family we show here. Did. Yes. <laughs> I know. Well, you know, I, I, I'm surprised. We it, it took to the last piece of the night to get to a beheading, but uh, we finally have one. But you know, they they were dead already, <laughs> so it's not. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, just because she beheaded, it doesn't mean it's really dead at this point, does it? Exactly. <laughs> oh man, but uh, that's that's very nice. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. But we're yeah. Gonna... So so this so. Yeah, because I was friends with Thomas and we were talking, mm -hmm. you know, it was one of those late nights uh, talking on a Facebook Messenger. You know, you know how that goes. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and then it led me to, to Esteban. And, um, and yeah, I got I to gotta touch base with him again and see. Uh, when I got this, this was about two years back, and it was right around um, – I think when I asked him about doing it, it was right around my birthday. So I said, well, maybe next year for my birthday, we'll do another one. Um, so I think um, no, it's a, I have it's to figure a, out something that'll be fun. That's not bad. And hey, uh, uh, Ronald Shepard, a, a regular in our chat, says, uh, Doc, I'm going to be in Baltimore. I'd like to meet up uh, to discuss sketchbooks. So, That's cool. Uh, sure. Ryan, Ryan gets a lot of sketches. He is a, uh, you know, and uh, he's, he's kind of, well, I mean, I don't want to speak for you, Ron, but I know Ron uh, doesn't you know, have a, have a uh, wealth of published pieces, definitely focuses in on commercial yeah. style pieces and those sorts of things. So, so if some, if, uh, you know, remember the name, Ronald Shepard, he will okay, uh, yeah. he can remember your, your face. So you'll have him, uh, he might be in a line with you at some point. <laughs> yeah, probably. Uh, yeah, there's definitely at this point, like there's people that I'll run into, you know, waiting online at a show and it'll be like, Hey, how you doing? And, and, um, one, one more shield story. When I was at one of the big Apple shows and John Cassidy was the guest, mm -hmm. was one of the guests there. And, um, lined up early because I wanted to, didn't want to wait on the long line that I knew was going to develop. So I was, you know, one of the first 20 people or something. And I'm, I have the shield with me and I'm talking to the guys in line behind me. And they were impressed by the, the little headshots that were on there. Uh, and I said, well, you know, maybe he'll draw something. I, I, I have a feeling that I'll be, be happy just to get the, the signature, but you never know. <clears throat> so I get to the front of the line and it's my turn. And I put the shield down in front of John and I asked him if he could sign it for me. And I said, if you don't mind, would you, you know, if you got to have time, could you do a little headshot on there? And then the guys who I had been talking to in line behind me, all of a sudden turned into a cheering section. Like, John, John, you got to draw something for him. He's been doing this so long. He's been working so hard on this. You really got to do it. You really need to. And I, I guess that was enough to tip, you know, the fact that people waiting their turn to get something from him were, were willing to wait a little longer. Willing to wait a little bit. He, yeah. he drew a little something. That's awesome. Um, which is very cool, yeah. Now, is this, uh, did you say it was last year? Was it John no, that was, that was a couple of years back already. Okay. That I, I want to say that was pre-pandemic, I think. Yeah. So that might have been 19. Mm -hmm. Well, very cool. Well, uh, yeah. look out, look for Ron at the uh, show for sure. I, I wish yeah. I could go. I was there last year, but I, they moved it up to September. Beginning He'll be September. there in spirit with us. Yes, definitely. And, uh, but uh, no, this was, this was a lot of fun, Ron. And I tell you, if we have you back on, you got to dig up the uh, Barry Windsor Smith pieces. And, yes, uh, absolutely. Shoot some pictures of those. I'd, I'd love to see them. I think that'd be fun. Yeah, between given the, between the couple of pieces we talked about that I that we didn't have, mm -hmm. like the Windsor Smith, and um, and I'll have at least one sketch jam piece, and and plus all the old ones that uh, uh, we can do a. Well, you mentioned you had one. Uh, all of them. I, I think uh, some of us wouldn't mind seeing the uh, the Dave Stevens kind of jam Rocketeer piece. You said you said you had done yeah or stuff like that. That turned I out good. Yeah, a couple of those. Yeah, awesome. Oh, the Barry Windsor. Oh, are the Barry Windsor Smith pieces in your calf gallery? I thought. Uh, 
I thought Rich said that uh, they weren't in your camp. But they were. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll dig over there. I thought I, I just was going by what I thought Rich said. Maybe it was a different yeah. thing he was talking about. Um, but anyways, Michael, uh, this was as fun as I thought it was going to be. This I, has been great. Yeah. This I has been a lot of fun it. talking about this stuff. I, and yeah, I mean, if you want to do, if, if you do like a Friday night show where we could just keep going, we could, we could do this for like four or five hours easy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I am certain we could. I mean, well, come on, you've got uh, 40 years of collecting in here, so I, we've only just scratched the surface. With yeah, really, we really just you know barely put a dent in things, and uh, and it's and it's growing. I mean, if if we do this again in the spring, let's say, you know, there'll have been at least at least two, maybe four more shows, plus the stuff we didn't see this time around that we'll dig out. So, yeah, a lot of good stuff. Okay. No, it sounds good to me. Well, everybody, and uh, you know, it was a lot of fun hanging out with you. I, I'm sorry we got the late start, but it all worked out fine yeah. at the end of the day. And uh, Michael, again, this was a lot of fun. Hopefully, um, we'll, do that too. Yeah, we'll definitely run into each other, I'm sure, at some point in the future. Because um, I, 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 I don't know if I'm going to make it to New York this year either. I was planning on it, and now I don't think so. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure we'll see each other soon. And uh, again, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. I think Michael's uh, phone is either. Uh, oh, nope. yep. There you are. You're back. Yep. Uh, at any rate, thank you, Michael, once again. And everybody, yeah. we'll, we'll see you again uh, another time. Have a good night.